Okay, so let's just go and get started. Um, the objective today, Thursday, April 23rd, 2020. We're almost wrapping up April. Um, the class, this is a class. So the objectives for the day is just to talk about the grades. Um, the grades are posted on Blackboard. So that means that if you go into Blackboard, the grades that you see, number one, are updated. And they should also reflect the grades that are in EDUCO. So if you look in EDUCO and you got one grade, it should be exactly the same grade in Blackboard. Um, and the other thing that I want to mention today is the summer classes. And we talked about earlier this semester, one of the things is that you're um, in this math 0071 class, but I always want to make sure that you understand what's your next math class. And I'm going to bring up that, that um, well, maybe I can see if I can go bring it up now. We'll see. Um, push your next math class. So everybody here is is right here in Math 0071. This is where everybody is right here in Math 0071. So hi. Okay, it's in Math 0071. So depending on your major, you can go to Math 1130. You remember I talked to. You can go to Math 1130, and this is if you're in your liberal arts area. Let me. Uh, your liberal arts area, your quantitative and statistics, depending on your major, uh, teacher education, applied business, and the science and engineering. So I think the first thing you want to make sure is that you clearly understand what major, what your major is. And, you know, the advisors are available and they're doing a lot of stuff remotely. And we are going to have summer classes and we are going to have fall classes. So we will have classes and you can kind of depend on um, and what your objective is or what your role is, is you want to make sure that you understand what your next math class is. Um, so here's most of us um, will be some of the students, most students will be going to 11 math 0104. Um, yeah. And remember, if you got an A here, you can go to math uh, 1350. So uh, this is posted on Blackboard, and I encourage you to continue to look at it because it's important to know what your next math class is. All right? Okay. Mm, let me share. So we got the grades that are posted in. Um, we got the grades that are posted in Blackboard. Um, the summer classes that that's posted on course compass so make sure you look and see what your next math class is a uh, fall 2020 classes we are going to have fall 2020 classes okay and i think that registration is um, actually open now registration is now open for fall classes we will have fall classes so you can work with your advisor and register accordingly whether we're going to be remote or not you probably want to get used to this environment for a little while. But I want you to know that we will get have all classes so you can move along with that. And advisors are available and they're doing a really, really good job at doing classes remotely. Um, I want to make sure that you understand the last day of class. The last day of class is going to be Saturday. They moved that up. They moved that or extended the last day of class is going to be Saturday, May 20th. And the reason I would say is because, you know, with this online environment, people are doing a lot of transitioning. So they want to make sure the students still get the benefit of the doubt if they, so you have until the last moment <laughs> to drop classes. Um, and that's right before the final exam. So the sections that we're going to cover today are Section 5.2 is factor in trinomials, and 5.3 is special factorization. So do we have any questions on, um, on the objectives or anything? Anything want anybody have any questions? All right, so let's just forge right ahead into the new topic. Um, 5.2 and what I'm going to do today is that I try something I'm trying something every day and maybe on Monday I'll have something I mean the next class I'll have something totally different but I want to try the whiteboard today 
I have my pencil, so I'm gonna try the whiteboard to see if um, if that can be a lecture more like in class. So here we go. All right, so our first objective, so 5.2 is what we are, um, um, it would be the objective today. And today we're gonna be factoring trinomials. Factoring trinomials, maybe I'll print. Okay, and factoring trinomials. So a trinomial is in the form like ax um, squared plus uh, bx plus c. All right, so that's a trinomial. And I wanna make sure that you understand that a, b, and c are all integers. They're all integers. So um, let's look at this form. Let's look at the example. And what I want to do is I'm just going to kind of jump into it. Um, if you have, so the directions here, and we talked about factoring the greatest common factor last time, but now we're going to be factoring these trinomials in this form. Um, you have this trinomial x squared um, minus 5x plus so we have this trinomial. And now what we want to do, our objective in 5.2 is to find out what these two, how do you factor, find out the factors of that trinomial. And if you remember, if you look at these two first factors, can you know what those two first factors are? Because when you multiply them, they have to be x squared. So this is going to be x and x. Any questions? So the, object, so the objective for you as a student is to figure out what these next two numbers are. That's your objective as a student. What are these next variables, the next two integers here, and look at their signs. So let me, so this is a student perspective. What you have to do is that you look have to look at two numbers, this bx, look at two numbers where The product So you're going to look at the product and the sum. You're going to look at two numbers where the sum is negative five, and the product is the C variable C. Okay, so this is your objective here. This is your objective as a student. So you have to think about what two numbers that you can multiply together to get four, but you're gonna add the same two numbers together to get negative five. So um, this is a student perspective. This is where I'm asking for your, your feedback. So again, you're gonna multiply and what you're actually multiplying is that you're multiplying, this is, this is your, mm, this is a, mm, okay, so this is not working out as well as the other one did, now I know. This is A, this is B, and this is C. So your product C, so you're thinking of two numbers that you multiply together to equal four, and you add, so you need the sum, the product here. This is the product. The same two numbers you're gonna add together, they equal negative five. Right, so any suggestions? What two numbers you multiply together to get positive four? You always have to look at the sign. You're going to get positive four, and you add the same two numbers together to get negative five. So you just kind of think negative about it. Negative four and negative one. Yeah, four and negative one. So if you have four, let's, so let's check it out. If we have four times negative one, so you multiply those together, look at four times negative one is going to be what? negative four, so we need a positive number here. So both these signs have to be negative because when you multiply, so 
because when you multiply negative four times negative one, that equals four. And if you take the same two numbers, negative four plus negative one, that's gonna equal negative five. All right, so this is your, this is your uh, objective for a student. So as a student, this is what you're doing right here. This is your, this is your task here as a student. You start multiplying these out. You have to think about two numbers. You're multiplying to get four, the same two numbers to get your B term, which is negative five. And so those two terms are negative four, negative one, and a negative four. And negative one and negative four, um, this author calls them your critical integers. Okay, so those are your critical integers, negative one and negative four. So when you factor this, when you factor this, this is going to be x minus one times x minus four. All right, so that's your objective here. And if you take a moment here, you can always use a distributive property to, to check it out. So you have x times x is x squared x times four is negative four, x times one is negative one, and negative one times four is gonna be four. <clears throat> so let me, uh, okay. So let's look at some of the workbook problems on factor trinomials. And what we're gonna be focusing on are the critical integers. So this is an exercise that we are gonna focus on the critical integers. That's our objective here. We're focusing on the critical integers. Let's see. Hmm. Hold on for a moment, sorry. Okay, so let's look at the critical integers here. So let's look at this. This is 5.2.1, and it says find two numbers whose product and sums are given. So that's your objective as a student. You need to make sure you look at the product and the sum. So you have the product of 35, 34, and the sum is 19. And it doesn't have to be in the magic about this because you're gonna have your calculators. So what two numbers that you multiply together to get 34, but you add the same two numbers together to get 14? I'm going to give you guys a moment to figure out the six. 17 12, and two. Huh? 17 and two. Okay, so let's check them out. You say that um, 17 times two. So you multiply those two numbers together. You get 34, is that right? And then yes. you add the same two numbers together, 17 plus 2, get 19. All right. So your critical integers here are the numbers 17 and 2. And let me not put them in parentheses. I really don't want to do that because I don't want you to think that they're like an ordered pair. We're just going to um, do 17. Mm. 17 and 2. All right, very good. So let's look at the other one. The product, we're thinking of two numbers where the product is 15, the sum is negative 8. Um, Are you the only one speaking today, Curtis? <laughs> I don't know. Is All right, it, so what are the numbers? I'm thinking... So you always think about the product first. And if you, you don't have to be in the max, just talk about the numbers. Let's look at three times five. You know, three times five is 15. Oh. Is there any way that you can add those numbers together to be negative eight? Yes. How, what has to happen? If they're two, the, both the three and the five has to be negative. Five have to be negative. Very good. Because when you mu multiply those numbers together, you get 15, but you add those numbers together, negative three plus negative five, that equals negative eight. So your critical integers here are negative three 
and negative five. And again, this author calls them critical integers. Okay. So let's look at the very last one. And these and, and being able to identify these critical integers is going to help us factor. Let's look at the last one here. The product is 21. And the sum is four. Put two numbers together, you multiply together, you get a negative 21, but you're adding the same two numbers together to get four. Seven and three. All right, so let's look at seven and three. Seven times three. So what has to happen for the product to be negative but the sum has to be a positive number. Negative three. Negative three. Okay, so let's check it out. Three, seven times negative three is negative 21, and seven plus uh, negative three is four. All right, so our critical integers in, in this set is going to be three, negative three, and seven. All right, so that's going to be one of your objectives in this in this section is to make sure that you can identify the critical integers. And that's gonna help you factor. That's gonna help you factor. So let's look at factoring here. Okay, so. Okay, so let's look at the, let's look up here. Let's try to factor some trinomials. This is your example, and this is your test as a student in the first. Um, in the first, so let's look here. So what you're doing here? Keep in mind that your product, your product is going to be multiplying two numbers. You multiply together, you get your end number, which is seven. You add the same two numbers together to get negative eight, right? So what two numbers that we have here? Your product is seven and your seven sum, and huh? Seven and one. Okay, so let's look at seven times one. Seven times one is definitely seven. So how do you get that product to be a negative eight? Negative one and negative seven. Right, they both have to be negative and that's equals seven. And then the sum is negative seven plus uh, negative one, so that equals that equals negative eight. So that's right, and this right here equals seven. So that's correct. So our critical integers here are negative seven and negative one. And once you identify your critical integers, then you can factor. The way you factor this just becomes x minus seven times x minus one. Hmm. Mm -mm. And this is your final sum. And I want to employ you. I want you to take a moment and do the distributive property to check it out. So in order to factor these trinomials, you have to first identify the critical integers, uh, which is the sum, the factors of the product and the sum, and then you can factor them very easily. All right. So let's look at let's look at number 32. You have x squared minus 2x minus 24. Okay, the factors. The factors are we have to think of two numbers where we multiply them together that equal 24. And we add the same two numbers together to equal negative 2. All right, so what are those numbers? We're multiplying them together to equal 24. We're adding the same two numbers together to get negative 2. 12 and 2. Okay, so let's check out 12 and 2. 12 comma 2, I'll just put a comma there. So how can we multiply those numbers together? When we add them, multiply them, we get ne negative 24, but when we add them together, we get negative 2. 
I think it's four and negative six. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's bad. Okay, so, okay, and then, and that's what you do. It's not that it's wrong. You know, once you get an error, it allows you to think. All right? Mm -hmm. Somebody else said what? Four and six. At negative six, because this number, so when you multiply four times negative six, Okay, so you have four times negative six. Yes, that equals negative 24. So, and when you add them together, uh, four plus a negative six, negative two, four plus negative six, sorry. Four plus negative six, that gives you negative six. So here, your critical integers are four and negative six. working with this technology here. Your critical integers are four and negative six. So how do you factor this? This factors into x plus four times x minus six. X plus four times x minus six. And this is your objective for this chapter, factor now, all right? So we're factoring. So remember, last time we took this, you know, we took this form right here, and, and the way we did it last in, the, in our previous, um, in our previous lesson, I would say what we did was we multiplied x times x, which was x squared, and then x times negative 6, which is negative 6x, 4 times x is 4x plus, and then you multiply 4 times negative 6 is negative 24. And when we combine our like terms, we get this, this uh, quad that the same thing that we multiplied by. All right? So let's look at the third one here, x squared plus 10x plus 24. Any questions so far? So the uh, factors that we're going to get is that factors are 24. So we have to think of two numbers. We multiply together to get 24. We add the same two numbers together to get 10. 6 and 4. Okay. Let's look at 6 and 4. So we multiply them together, we get 24, and we add the numbers together to get 10. And the sign, since we have positive, both of them are going to be positive 6 and positive 4. So our critical integers are 6 and 4. This is a comma. So how do you factor that? The way you factor that, this becomes x plus 6 times x plus Any questions here? Yeah, excuse me. Uh huh. Please, I sorry, I'm so sorry. I don't know if it is convenient for you. From the beginning of this class, you know, I wasn't with you. I don't know if you can just be explained to me, you know, to this class. Uh, would you repeat the question, please? The, from the beginning of today's class, I wasn't, you know, following with you. I don't know if it is possible for you to just, you know, be explained to me again, please. What do you mean? As a, you 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 came in late in the class, or yeah, so I didn't get anything. Yeah, I don't understand. You know, since you know, you mean you joined late and you want me yes, to go? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, okay, so it's going to be hard for me to um to start completely over, but okay. um the exercise today is we're just doing the product and the sum, and 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 I won't start from the beginning, but what I will do is that I will, um, let me clear this, I will kind of go over one of these examples to kind of let you know what we're doing and not just for you, for the entire class. Um, in this 5.2, we are factoring. We're factoring and that's what you have to do. We're factoring here. And when we factor, you have to look at the product and the sum. You have to look at the product and the sum and that was the objective that we was going over the product and the sum. Let me get, so 
Um, I don't know. Let, let me look at a couple of more. Hold on for a minute. Okay, so here we are, factoring again. So let's look at these two. We're going to complete factorization. So remember, last time we talked about the greatest common factor. So we have the products and the sum. And the one thing that you really want to think about in all of this is the greatest common factor. And what I want to point out here is that whatever a term, Whenever term, I want you, let's, I want to circle this for a moment. I want you to really pay attention to this. So whenever each term of a given trinomial has a common factor, we talked about common factors last time, and I really want you to understand common factors. It should be factored out first before the trinomial is factored. It's a two-step process that we call complete factorization. And remember, complete factorization is when the terms don't have any common factors. So we're looking for complete factorization. So the first thing that we have to look at, if we look at number 38 here, it says factor completely. Factor completely means that they have no common terms. So if we look at 38, what is the common factor here? What's the common factor? Do you see what's the common factor in AT squared? Plus 7TA plus 10A. A. 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 Very A. good. So the first thing you want to know, you want to get in the habit of always asking yourself, what's the common factor? So we're going to factor out the common factor A here. So we're factoring out A. And what we have left here is T squared plus 7T plus 10. And now that we have a factor, now we can factor this. All right, we remove the common factor. That's going to be always your first step to remove the common factors. Now we go to the process. We're looking for the sum. We're looking for the product and the sum. So here's our thought again. What two numbers together, when we multiply them together, we get 10. And we add the same two numbers together, and we get seven. Five and two. So the, our critical factors here are five and two. I think that that was, um, that was, so you, and I always kind of, again, like I always tell you to kind of take a moment, a moment to do the distributive property to make sure you're, you factor correctly. I always take a moment to kind of talk out loud to yourself. Five times two is 10, five plus two is seven. So that means that you can clearly verify those um, critical integers and make sure that you have them, make sure that you have them correct. All right. So how do you factor this trinomial? You're going to factor out A. It's what, so don't remember to keep this. And this is going to be T plus five times T plus two. I'm going to bring it up a little bit. This is, again, make sure you bring out your common factor A, and this is going to be T plus 5 times T plus 2. And again, take a moment, use the distributive property to check it out, but this is your final solution. Factor. Always ask yourself, what's the common factor? Let's look at 40. 5x cubed plus 20x squared plus 20x. The question is, is what you always want to ask yourself, do they have any common factors? The answer is yes. Yes, x. Okay, x is a common factor. That's correct. What about the coefficients? Um, 
Um, What's the common five. factor? Five. So the common, the the okay. common, the greatest common factor is five x. So when we factor out five x, what do we have remaining here? X, x squared, squared plus four x four x plus four. four. Okay. Here we go. So now, again, it says factor completely. So we want to make sure that you factor completely. What two numbers that you multiply together, uh, multiply together to get four, which is your C, you add the same two numbers together to get four here. This is a pretty easy one. Everybody should know this is what? Two. Two, very good. You multiply. Two times two to get four, and you can also multiply, add two times two plus two to get four. So your critical integers here are two and two. Those are the critical integers. So you're going to factor this as again. Make sure you bring out your. Don't forget your greatest common factor. This becomes five x times x plus two times x plus two. Factoring. This is your objective for 5.2. Any questions here? All right, let's look at 42. So 42 looks a little long, but it's not that long. And, um, but more importantly, if you look at the three terms, you can clearly, or can you clearly see the greatest common factor in those three terms? Wow. Wow. Hmm. They do have a great, they do have a common factor. You as a student have to make sure you can identify that common factor. It's not why. Okay. Not just why, look at the whole term that's in the parentheses. Y plus one. Y plus, y oh. plus one. Can y you see that each term has Y plus one? So yes. let's check it out. Removing the greatest common factor. So we're going to remove Y plus one from each one. And what do we have left? X squared. X squared. Minus four. Minus four. Minus four. You see this little X hanging out here? Mm -hmm. Do y'all see this little X all the way yeah. over here? Mm -hmm. Minus 4x minus 12. Minus. Okay. Factor completely. That means that you have to keep on factoring. Now we have this trinomial here where we're looking at the product. We have this product. I'll do like this. So we have this product. So I'm looking at the factors of negative 12. What two numbers you multiply together to get negative 12. You're going to add the same two numbers together to get negative four. Six, six and two. two. Six and two. Okay, so let's look at six and two. Let's look at the signs of six and two. What, what number has to be negative for when you multiply them together, get negative 12, but you add them together, you get negative four? Two. Minus six. Yeah, the six yeah. has to be negative. negative. Mm -hmm. so your, cri your critical integers here are negative six and two. Again, now this often call these critical integers. So again, don't forget to make sure that you always don't forget to bring down your great your greatest common factor. So the fact of this trinomial, you have y plus one times x minus six times x plus two. And that's how you factor, and that is factor completely. All right, so you're looking at the product and the sum and factoring completely. Any questions here? Nope. You need a moment to soak it up? All right. So let's, uh, all right, so that's what, this is what we're doing in 5.2. Um, 5 let's look at some more factoring. So this is some more factoring here. Let's 
we can do these. You want to? I'll I'll give you a moment to um do these right here. Let me see. Not remote control. Annotate. Clear. Okay, so look at this six twelve. Okay, so we have a lot more here. We won't do all of these. This is six point one. It's nine twenty four. So maybe I will. Uh, let's look at these three. Maybe I can assign you. Um, no, this is factor by grouping. Okay, so this is. I need to show you this one. Okay, so remember one of the things that we talked about on yesterday was factor by grouping. Remember, you just, some of you, a lot of you did your homework, which was really nice. So then that means that um, that was really nice, um, which was good. So let's go with factor by grouping. So if we look at these terms right here, so these are a little bit different. These are a little bit different. And the reason why they're different, the main reason why these are different is because if you look at the, the term, the A term, first of all, you can look at the A term and this right here is not one. Look at these three terms. This is not one. These are not one. And when the term is not one and they don't have any common factors. So if you look at two, six and 12, let's look at all three of them together collectively, they don't have any common factors. Six, three, eight, there's no common factors here. Two X squared plus nine plus 10, there's no common factors here. Three Y squared minus four minus four, there's no common factors here. When there's no common factors and this variable A is more than one, then you have to dig back into your toolbox here, and then we're going to factor by grouping. Factor by grouping, and the other tip that you have to remember is that we're going to rewrite the middle term. Rewrite uh, the middle term. Okay, let's see how we do that. So we have to get um, factor by grouping and how do we rewrite the middle term? So in order to get our product and sum, you're gonna multiply the, see it says the sum of A times C here. Remember this is A, this is B, and this is C. So the product here, the product, we're looking for the product, the product here, the product here is going to be six times negative three. So the product that we're going to be looking for is negative 18. The sum we're going to be looking for is seven. All right, here we go. What two numbers that we multiply together to get negative 18, but when we add the same two numbers together, you get seven. We're going to multiply them together to get negative 18, but we're going to add the same two numbers together to get seven. I'm listening. Negative nine and two. Okay. Negative nine. Sorry, we it. Two. Okay, let's take a moment to check it out. We multiply them together. We definitely get negative 18, but when we add them together, we get negative seven. So what has to happen to the signs here? Nine and two. So this should be positive nine and negative two. So positive nine and negative two are our critical integers. Positive nine, negative two. Because we multiply them together, we get negative 18. We add the same two numbers together, we get seven. All right. So here we go. Now we have to rewrite the middle term here. So I don't know if I get left my, so let's look at this factor here. So we're going to take 
a squared. But when we write, write this middle term, we're going to use our critical integers here. This is plus 9a minus 2a minus 3. So let's look at this for a moment to see what we've done. So first of all, we've realized that we didn't have any common factors. So we, there was no greatest common factor here. So it's like, hmm, there's no greatest common factor. And when this A is more than one, when this A variable is more than one, then you can factor by grouping. This is when you factor by grouping. And in order to get those four terms, remember when you factor by grouping, you need four terms. And in order to get those four terms, you need to rewrite the middle term. And the way we rewrote the middle term, we wrote them using our critical integers here, which was nine and negative two, because if you take nine and negative two, you get a positive seven. Now that we have these four terms, now that we have these four terms, you could factor by grouping. You remember factor by grouping? What do these terms have in common? What's the, what the, what's the greatest common factor here? Ah, 3A. These, right, 3A. 3A. 3A, I'm sorry. And when we factor out a 3A here, we have A plus 3. We have 2A plus 3. All right, again, and I caught the 2A plus 3 very quickly because I did the distributive property in my head really quickly. And if we factor out here, what are we going to factor out here so we can have the same factor 2A plus 3? Here you have to factor out a negative 1. And when you factor out a negative 1, you have 2A plus 3. And if we look at those, what's your greatest common factor here? 2a plus 3. If you look here, mm -hmm. you should see a 2 greatest 2a plus 3. So we have 2a plus 3 times 3a sure. minus 1. Right. This is how you factor that trinomial. That's the object of their factoring. So again, now take a moment, uh, do this distributive property, and make sure that it it comes up. Make sure that it comes out to um, this trinomial here. Make sure that it comes out there when you factor it out. Got a question? Uh huh. So when that um, when a is always more than one, do we always mm -hmm. use um, the first, the A and the C to, to get the, um, um, the critical in integers? Yes, always after you have, yes. The answer, the, question, the answer to your question is yes. However, you have to make sure that you're always thinking about uh, the greatest common factor. And you only do that once you have removed the greatest common factor. You, you've got you've got to do that. All right, so I'm going to write this 2x plus 9x plus 10 on the whiteboard. I'm going to see if I can do it on the whiteboard. Here I go again, trying to do something different. <laughs> trying to get better with this. Uh... Okay, I don't know how much I missed there. So... Um... All right, so again now, we're doing the old fashioned way, right? We're looking at the product and the sum. We're looking at the product and the sum. And so the question is, where's my navigate? We're looking at the product and the sum. Hmm, I can't, I lost my, um, I lost my, um, my functions here. I didn't want to do that. Share screen. 
I want to go back here. Uh -uh. New share. I want to go back to my whiteboard. Oh, yeah, here it is. Okay, so let's start all over. We're kind of getting lost in the muck. So what I started out doing this, and this says right here, factors. Mr. Curtis. And I, I went through this product of, can you see the whiteboard? Yes. Okay, so I went through this product of trying to do the guess and check on this, on this um, and I didn't come up with them. I didn't work them out in advance, so I didn't come up with them. So now I'm just going reverting back to, you know, doing the product and the sum. And when you do the product, when this right here is more than one, you're going to multiply 12 times negative 10, which is a negative 120, a large number, but, you know, we got our calculators. It's no big deal. And the sum has got to be positive 17. So the first thing that I do is that I look at all the factors of 120 because you can do 120 a lot of ways. So I just look at the prime factors and looking at these prime factors, I can see what numbers we can add together to get 17, you know? So uh, did anybody come up with the numbers? Multiply two numbers together, get negative 120 and add them together and get 17. So I'm just looking at these numbers here. So you can look at eight times, um, so if you look at, this is eight times 15. So that's not gonna give you 17, right? Mm -hmm. And if you look at uh, 10 times uh, 12, 10 times 12, 10 and 12 is not gonna give you 17. Huh, am I getting stumped? All right, so what about six times 20? Six and 20 is not gonna give you 17. Okay, well, let me put a pause on this. I didn't work out the problem in advance. Let me look at it for a moment. I'm going offline. I'm going offline to, um, to work it out myself. 5.2. How come I can't figure it out? Okay, this is number. Number 23. Okay, so the numbers are larger. That's no big deal. Are you guys still working? <laughs> this twelve X, this is fifteen uh, X. Minus eight, that's not 17. Huh, you know what? I'm gonna say this is prime because sometimes you can't, you can't factor it out unless I'm missing something. Am I missing something here, students? I'm asking the students if I'm, if I'm missing something. This number is prime. I think this is a prime. Uh, that means that it can't be factored, but I'm looking at it again because, um, let me see. Am I missing something? This is four. How can you, so if these are the factors of 120, these are the factors of 120, two times two times two times five times three. So those are the factors of 120. We should be able to take some of these numbers right here because all these will be multiplied to get, what combination of these numbers can we add together to get 17? Is there any combination of these numbers that we can add to get 17? Let's see, this is, so, and what I'm looking at, I look at four, this is 10 times eight. Hmm. This is 10 times, 10 and eight. If you multiply 10 and eight, there's no way you can get 17. Three times anything, huh? All right, so we're in the middle of class, and I'm going to write this problem out. I know that it's prime. I can't think of any numbers of x squared plus 17x minus 10. I think it's prime. 
All right, so that's that's going to be the lesson for the day. I think it's prime because you and you know we have to go through this process, and sometimes you will get a prime factorization. All right, that's the one I'm gonna go with today. All right, unless I'm missing something as a teacher. Sometimes I'm not always right. Um, okay, so I can't figure it out. I think this is a prime fact, prime number. All right, any questions here? Huh, this is a real, real one. We're gonna, I'm gonna table this one. I'm gonna look at this one again once we get, leave class. <laughs> All right, so let's get, let's look at our very last one here, number 25. Twenty-five. The numbers are getting larger, so you know our calculator comes in handy. Twelve x squared minus twenty-nine x plus fourteen. So let's just do our product and sum here, and we want. And these numbers are getting big. <laughs> All right. So um, the product here. Is going to be uh, 12 times 14. Wow. 12 times 14 is uh, 168. These numbers, yeah. All right. And then the sum is going to equal negative 29. And normally, when I do these, I just look at the product first. And this is 168. So, you know, if I'm on my calculator, I just kind of do it a little methodically. I take 168 and divide it by two. So that's um, two times 84. And I know that there's no way you can add those numbers up together to get 29. And then I just use the next factor of um, 168. And I know that three times 56 is uh, 168. But there's no way that we can add those numbers up to get 29. And then I just take 168 and just look at the next factor, four times 42. Um, there's no way we can add those numbers up to get 49. I mean, 29, which is our middle term. So I just go down the factor. I know five is not a, a factor. 168 divided by um, six. So we have six times 28. There's no way we're gonna get 29 there. Hmm. Well, professor, I got I got eight. Eight and what? Twenty-one. Eight and twenty-one. All right. So there you go. Somebody's using their calculator a little bit faster than me. Okay. So we're doing the old-fashioned way here. So eight and twenty-one because you multiply. And so in this way. So thank you for getting that out. But this this is what I do. I just look at the factors of sixty-eight. I look at two and eighty-four. I know that doesn't get twenty-nine. Next factor three and fifty six that doesn't get twenty nine. I just go and that's kind of the way you do it. There's no magic to this, you know. There's no magic, so you have to figure out. So the two numbers you multiply together eight times twenty one is one sixty eight, and you add those two numbers together to negative twenty nine. So the signs have both these signs have to be negative, right? They have to be negative. So now once you get this one, because we we had to figure out the product and sum with the A and C, this is where we rewrite the middle term. I guess the check, guess the check is easier when you um the numbers are small. So when we rewrite this middle term, so we have 12x squared minus 29x plus 14. We're rewriting the middle term using our critical integers. So we have 12x squared minus 8x minus 21x plus 14. All right, now that we have four factors, we can factor by grouping. The looking at the common terms here, looking at the common factors here. 12x squared minus 8, the common factor there is 4x. You agree? We factor out a 4x, 
we have 3x minus 2. Always get in the habit of doing the distributive property. 4x times 3x is 12x squared. 4x times this is negative 8x. That's right. And here we're going to factor out a 7. Let's factor out a negative 7. And we're factoring out a negative 7. And we factor out a negative 7. Then we have 3x minus 2. And again, taking a moment to do the distributive property in your head to make sure that it factors. And the common factor here is 3x minus 2 times 4x minus 7. So this is how we factor this number completely. And again, if you want to check, if you want to check, let's just check it. So this is factor. Let's check it. When you check these factors, so this is our, our process here. So when you check it, you multiply your two first term, 3x times 4x is 12x squared. That term is checked. Negative 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. That term is checked. The middle term is what's always important, and that's what factors the product. When you take your two inside terms, this becomes negative 8x. And your two outside terms is negative 21x. And when we add those together, we get negative 29x. And that's how you check. This is how you check your polynomials. Okay. So um, that's 5.2. Uh, let's take a five. Let's take a let's take a five minute break because I do have to do five point three, and five point three is just uh, special factors. But I just kind of want to take a break. Or do y'all want to take a break? You know, in class we don't take a break. We just get up because we can just <laughs> <laughs> we can just um, you know relax. But I do want to uh, start five point three, uh, so we can just stay on schedule to uh, finish. But I need a five minute break. Right. Okay. So, okay. okay. Go ahead. What'd you say? Take a break. Yeah, take a break. It's 10 13, five minutes, 10 18. Let's come back. Right. Okay. Okay, 10 18. We'll be back. All right. So, do you see these problems on the board here? 5.3 here. Okay, are we back? Some of us are back. Okay, so 5.3. All right, we ready? Did some more come back? It's 5.21, 18, 19, 20, 21, so we're three minutes behind. Let me just go and start. So 5.3, 5.3 is going to be special factorization. Okay, so there's really nothing that's special about special factorization. You know, we talk about special factorization. And one of the things that I want to uh, reemphasize is that how important patterns are. I really want to make sure that you emphasize We'll understand how important the patterns are. And the directions are going to see the same because if you peek down here, it says factor down here at 3.1. It says factor each polynomial completely. So this is another factor. So now we're talking about the product of the sum and the differences. The sum and the differences. So when you have x plus y, times x minus y, we can do the distributive property and check it out, but that ends up to be x squared minus y squared. And that's a pattern that you can remember. So when you see something that says factor, and if you can see it's the product, the square of a first term minus, again, this is the middle, the sign has to be minus, the square of the second term, you can automatically factor it as x plus y, x minus y. 
All right, let's look at number two here. Let's look at number two. Again, now, you want to make sure that you look at the patterns. Patterns is what we want to make sure we do. Look at the patterns. Let's look at this, and they have conveniently put these down. So you can look at this as uh, z squared, z squared minus four over three squared. Do you agree? Because you have to be able to write them as both as square terms. So when you write them as both as square terms, you factor this as z plus four thirds times a Z minus four thirds. That's the final solution. Right, another factor. When you can look at the patterns here, but you have to be able to write them as a square of two terms. So let's write this as a square of two terms. This is um, three X squared, and that number is squared. We can write that as a square term. This right here must be minus. This must be a minus. Uh, this is 2y squared. And again, so always take a moment to look, do the multiplication in your head to make sure that it's exactly right. Any questions? So once you can you write them when you can write these numbers as the difference, the sum and difference, then that means that you can easily factor this into three x squared plus two y times three x squared minus two y. Any any questions here? This is our final solution here. And um, I'm going to go to, to the whiteboard to, um, I'm going to go to the whiteboard to do the, um, the other two. Let's go to share. Any questions here? Again, now we're looking at patterns. Are we looking at patterns here? Clear. Let's look at the other one. Again, we're looking at patterns here. This is in the direction says the factor. Uh, this is number six. And number six is 4x squared minus 25. Remember the pattern you have um, x squared minus y squared. When you have something like that, you can always factor in the x plus y times x minus y. Patterns. So if you look at the pattern, this is something else that's in your toolbox. You can factor this as 2x. This is squared minus 5 squared. And I kind of take a moment to write this second step out so you can make sure that you have your factors correct. So this is going to become 2x plus 5 times 2x minus 5. Any questions? Again, something else you have in your toolbox. Let's look at number 8. Number eight is um, a squared b squared minus b squared. And um, so what are you going to do here? What's your first question? Sometimes we, sometimes when I'm explaining, I get out of the habit of asking a question. I get out of the habit of asking a question. And what's the question that you should be asking yourself all the time is, are there any common factors? 
Are there any common factors in it? And, you know, I forget it because I can kind of look at it and see that there's no common factors, but you want to make sure that you always ask yourself, are there any common factors? And um, because I'm pausing here, that means that there are some common factors. So what are the common factors here? What's common in both factors? Hmm. The square. B squared, all right, very good. So when you factor out B squared, what we have here is A squared minus one. Again, kind of do the distributive property, A squared minus one. And again, now here, if you look at here, this is one, this can be written as A squared minus one squared, right? And again, this is B squared. So when you factor this out, this becomes B squared times A minus one times A plus one. This is a pretty nice little problem. This is a, this is a cool final exam problem. They'll, they'll throw that in on you for sure. But again, the fact that the, the main thing is that you always wanna ask yourself, what's the greatest common factor? Sometimes I stop doing that because I can kind of look at it. But as a student, you always want to continue to ask what's your greatest common factor. All right, any questions here? Any questions? Okay, so this is five point question. I just worked over these four problems here. All right, so our last term, our last um, factoring concept is going to be here. Um, our last one here is going to be factoring perfect square trinomials. Sometimes students get kind of a little challenged here, perfect square trinomials. But again, now this is more of a, of a fact. This is more of uh, um, the patterns. And uh, this is one where you can always fall back on the product and the sum. When all else fail, you can always fall back on the product of the sum. But because we're going to be doing so many of these, if you can recognize the factors, then that's going to be really, really, if you can recognize the patterns, it's going to be important. So, you know, this, let's look at this one right here in the middle. The perfect square trinomials. Let's look at this one. This is what I want to look at right here. Perfect square trinomials. And that is... And I'm going to look at them like in a in a different um, in a different way. So I want to look at this when you have x plus one. This x plus x x plus x times x plus x is the same thing as x plus x y x plus y squared. And this is how it factors into. If you look at them, both of them factors into the same. Both of them factors into the same way. It's the first term squared. So if you look at them, it's the first term squared. Look at the pattern. The last term is also squared. But look at the middle term. X plus one times X plus one, the middle term is plus. X minus Y times X minus Y, the middle term is negative. Okay, so let's just go over a few steps to kind of talk about how you would, how you would, um, let me see if I can erase it. No. Let's look at these steps right here. So again, now, this is just something that you put in your toolbox so you can understand how to factor. So first of all, if you can determine, to determine whether it's a perfect square, 
you're going to look to first of all to see if the first term is a perfect square to see if the second term is a perfect square and to see if two times the two squares equal the middle term and then if all three of those conditions are satisfied then you can write it out as a as a perfect square try as a write it out as a trinomial but again the way you write it out is that if the middle term is positive your two x your middle term is going to be positive if this middle term is negative then your middle term is negative and these notes again i'm pulling these problems from the problems that are on blackboard and this stuff is on blackboard so you can always kind of go over and um and look at those right so let's look at a few problems here out here let's okay um and we're just going to look at these four problems here this right this this concept down here the the problems i'm going to do two four six and eight so the the 5.33 the factors of summing cubes <coughs> we're not going to cover that in this semester this chapter in this course so once we do these four right here that's going to be all that we're going to do in this in this section that we're not going to do this factor in the sum of cubes so you can you know you can uh go make that So let's look at the first one to make sure that we can get the pattern. So when it was the pattern, again now, this is another something else you can put in your toolbox. This is something else you can put in your toolbox for learning. If we look at the first one here, the first term is a square, right? That's x squared. Let's check. Let's check. So let's check. The y is a perfect square. Yeah, this is a perfect square because this is six squared. So that checks. And the middle term. This is two times one times six. Oh, that checks too. So all three of those checks. So I know that this right here. I know that this, because those conditions check, I know that this is the perfect square trinomial. And because this middle term is positive, again, now let me go over here. This is X, this is a perfect square because, and when you start talking about perfect squares, you're looking at the coefficients. Let me say that. This is one square, so that checks. This is six squared. So that checks, and the middle term is two times one times six, and that checks for the middle term. So now I know that this is a perfect square, and this is, is because this number is positive, this is gonna be factored into x plus six squared. That's your final product. A final answer. Now, see, the, the, these are perfect squares because it's in this section. Uh, again, this is just another tool that you can put in your uh, toolbox. Let's look at number four. What we want to do is make sure we check the perfect squares. If we look at this, if we look at 25, yeah, this is a perfect square. This is a uh, 5y squared, so that checks. Let's look at the c part. This is 9 squared, so the second part, that, that checks. So let's check the middle term. The middle term is 2 times 5y times 9. So it's 2 times 5 is 10, 10 times 9, 9. Okay, so the third term check. And because this number is positive, you can rewrite this factor as 5y plus 9 squared. That's your final answer here.
All right, any questions here? All right, so this one right here, you got a fraction, but you know, we can do fractions. This right here is one squared, that checks. This right here is nine over two squared, that checks. The middle term, the middle term is what we're trying to check. So is the middle term two times one times nine over two? Yes, because when you multiply this, these two, these two twos cancel here. And then that equals 9x. So that checks. So all so once you check all three of them, you can just write it out as a um, you can write it out as a perfect square here. The middle term is positive. And since the middle term is positive, this is gonna be x plus nine over two squared. Did y'all come back? I feel like I'm lecturing to an empty hall now. <laughs> you're here. Okay, you're here. Okay, good. All right. So again, now this is this is something else you can put in your toolbox. And you know, right now you may be looking at the greatest common factor. You're looking at the product and the sum. You start thinking about factor by grouping. And those are all things you have to digress, um, separate in your head and figure out the tools that you have in your toolbox to come up with the factor, with a proper factory. All right, I'm gonna take number eight and I'm gonna put this one on the whiteboard because it's gonna take me a little bit more room here. All right, so I'm gonna take number eight and, and uh, go to a new share. I'm gonna go to the whiteboard and put this one out uh, clear. Okay, I'm gonna, just because it's gonna take me a little more, more. So number eight, number eight is 25 minus nine, 90 X plus 81 X squared. Um, direction says factor completely. So, um, you know, you can kind of turn it around. You can turn it around if you want to. I mean, when I say turn it around, I mean, you can write it in um, standard form if you want to. It doesn't really matter. Um, let's write it in standard form. 80, 80, 81x minus 90x plus 25. But your student, your your um, task as a student, the only thing it's going to say is factor completely. And as I go through each one of these, um, e -L -Y, as I go through through each one of these, you know, we're going section by section, and in each section, in each section, I give you a different technique. Each section, I give you a different technique. And you may understand them once I go over the first time, but when you start getting to the exam, they're gonna all be put together. So you're gonna have to have, I may give you a cheat sheet of everything that you have to have. Okay, again, now we're in recognizing patterns and we're gonna recognize the pattern here. If we look at this, we can see this is a square because this is nine X squared. So the first, condition checks. Then we're gonna look at C, this is five squared. So the second condition checks. Now we're gonna check the middle term. The middle term must be two times the first term, which is nine X times the second term, which is five. Does that equal 90? Two times five is 10, times nine X is 90. So the middle term checks. And because all of those is perfect squares and it checks, this is a negative number here. So you can factor this into 9x minus 
five squared. Okay, any questions here? Any questions? No. All right. So that's that's it. That's it. So here in in this section, um, the only thing that again now we're not going to do the factor by cubes. That's not going to be in our in our in our curriculum. So right now, what we've done is that we've done five point two, and we and the direction says the factor. We talk about the product and the sum, and then five point three is just special factorization. Special factor. And that again, that's just a more pattern. So uh, once we start, and then in 5.4, so we've got all the tools that we need to learn. So when we start with 5.4 and 5.5, we're going to start solving equations, which is pretty cool. But in order to solve these equations, you have to be able to factor. So I think that, um, I think it'll be okay. I think that uh, maybe these two sections that it's going to take you a moment but i think that over the weekend you should make sure that when we when i see you on tuesday that you've done 5.1 5.2 and 5.3 and if you are done those and really understand them then you will be ready for 5.4 and 5.5 and then that'll be it for the semester you okay. believe we're coming to the home stretch sounds good Sounds good to me too. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. All right. So, Ev, do you have any questions here? No. All right. I'll give you a moment if anybody have any questions. I'll be around. But other than that, that's the wrap for the class today. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any Thank questions? You, Professor. All right. You're welcome. Y'all have a good evening. Continue to take care of yourself. Even though you might feel better, continue to take care of yourself because we're not out of the woods yet. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Y'all have a good evening. If there's no more questions, me too. All right. Thank you. Good night. Or not good night. Thank good you. evening. Yeah. <laughs> have a nice weekend. All right. You too. Thanks. Five one yeah. and five point two. Get those done. Okay. Five one, five two, and five three. Oh, okay. Sure. All right. Thanks. Y'all have a good okay. evening. You too. too. All right. Bye. Bye. -bye. Oh, cool. <laughs>